Let's begin. Connect to our breath, align skull over pelvis. I'm feeling the shoulders soften, the hands softening, opening. And we'll move directly into our pranayama. Um, I'll offer the cues for holding, but please know there are, might be practitioners that might not want to hold their breath. So just want to place that there first. Okay. So working alternate nostril breathing, I'm choosing my right hand, right thumb, close right nostril. And we'll begin just with a one to two ratio. Inhaling through the left. Exhaling out the right. So the inhale is about a five count in through the right. Out through the left, about 10 count. So that's where the one and the two come from. The exhale is twice as long as the inhale. Let's do a few more like so. Now we'll start to add a hold, so one to one to two. So let's say I inhale five count. Then hold same amount, five count. Both nostrils closed. Before exhaling longer out the right. I think breath holds are one of these things that we need to cozy up to and become really friendly with. Breath holds may not be the thing to just jump right in and do. So just tailoring our, our technique. All right. And lastly, one to two to two ratio. So we're inhaling. Again, I'll use the example of five, hold 10, out 10. They're just extending the hold.
We're just finishing up a one to two to two alternate nostril breathing. So I'll just give it this final round or so. Note what you feel as we take this from just kind of automatic respiration to mindful respiration to extending and slowing and changing our respiration. Try to step us through in just really gradual ways. So you can feel this change as we dramatically change and, and slow our breathing. When you're complete with that, just whenever you, you finish up, there's no, there's no hurry. We'll go shoelace or any other right over left leg position that works well for you. We'll do some unlocking the uh, shoulder. So we'll go our right elbow in front of our right shoulder. Opening up the palm, feeling inside all of the right hand fingertips. Inhale. Exhaling, glide the right shoulder down. Kind of pooling, drawing the right arm forward. It's a function of these muscles, side and front of body, pulling the shoulder blade forward. Inhaling into the back of the heart and reaching with your breath for those muscle fibers between the, the shoulder blade and the spine. And exhaling, glide the shoulder down and pull and draw the elbow forward. Okay. I'm just going to add my palm for one more breath round. Inhaling, place the left palm on the right elbow. Still drawing that right shoulder down, opening up the hand, feeling inside the fingertips. Exhaling, the shoulder down. Press, so chest muscles turn on more, and pulling the arm forward with those chest and armpit muscles. Pull the shoulder blade around. And release. We'll take a slight walk forward into a fold. Set your hands. <coughs> Pardon me. Where you can bend the elbows. Set the hands beside you or in front of you. Have the elbows a little bit bent. And with those elbows slightly bent, keep pulling the elbows toward the ground. And to be very clear, I'm pulling the arm bone and the shoulder blade are moving. My chest remains lengthening away from the pelvis. So this arm move, this shoulder move that we do is not a chest compressor. So we're just gently exposing the, the fibers around the shoulder blade and the upper back. And coaxing breath into those upper back joints, bones.
We'll walk our way up. We'll switch sides. We'll go left arm up. Inhaling. And track with your breath inside your body, right? It's the point of all of this, that we keep inhabiting our body. Exhaling, glide the left shoulder down. Pull, draw that left arm forward. That movement distinguishes the arm from the rib cage. Feel that distinction. Inhaling into the upper back. To feel the rib cage expanding toward the back uh, of your room. And exhaling the shoulder down. Reach the forearm forward. And now we'll go with the palm pressure, right palm to left elbow, inhale. Exhaling the shoulder down, add some pressure. Reach, pull the arm forward. Keep lifting the ribs up. The ribs go vertical, even though the arm goes forward. Ah. One thing I really like about that move, we can relax that, is it helps us distinguish breathing from our core from the effort of our arms. Let's fold forward, have the elbows able to bend. So if you need to move your hands out to the sides a little bit. And release, we'll walk our way up. We'll be doing some uh, abdominals with a, an object, so if you want to select your block or your roll, let's grab that, lie on back, and when we place our legs up, please, please remember that if there's anything going on twingy in the back of the legs. Keep the knees soft, right? Often if there's like a little twinge or a muscle pull, we can um, we usually just lay off the, the stretches for a little bit. Contractions might be nice, okay? So we don't have to try to straighten the legs. All right, we've got the object, the legs are up. The knees are appropriately bent for our, the current state of our tissues. Inhale into the low back. You feel all these breaths going to the back of the body, right? Squeeze the object. So we're getting all those inner hamstrings working, turned on. Exhale, float the head and the shoulder blades off the ground. Draw the low belly down, relaxing through the eyes and underneath the skull. Inhaling, set the head down, release some of that leg squeeze pressure. Squeeze again. Exhale, curling tailbone, float the head and the shoulders up. Now reach through those open shoulders. 
So the lifting, the reaching through the elbows promotes that spreading out quality uh, across the back of the heart. And then draw the belly down, feel what happens in the back of the heart. Inhaling, set the head down. I feel this, this global pulsing through the body. The inhale expands, and now we squeeze in with the legs. Exhale, lift through the elbows, opening the shoulders, condensing through the abdomen, drawing that low abdomen down, down, down. And then inhaling is softening the abdomen, softening the squeeze. The head unfurls to the ground, the spine unfurls along the ground. Let's do three more. On our own. We get a lot of these beginning moves that we do in the, the top of our practice are about just gently finding, exposing, moving, undulating the spine. We're just starting to prepare the body, getting it warmer, by getting all this gelatinous, fibrous matrix, cellular matrix a bit warmer, so that's really, really key. Because as it warms, it can start to move. Its placement, its relationship to all of our other structure can start to change. Those relationships become more gliding than friction. So the heat helps us be a more gliding relator than a Frictiony relator. <laughs> Good. Looks like we're done. Move the roll off to the side. We'll set up for dolphin. Moving to elbows and knees. Press or pull the forearms into the ground. Again, those are those armpit muscles, those chest muscles. At the same time I'm pulling my arms into the ground, I can press my rib cage toward the sky. It's not rounding the spine, but again, distinction, arms from rib cage. Moving on exhale, press the knees off the ground. And just like we started, I'm gonna keep cueing us to coax breath into the back side of the rib cage. So we're continuing to feel and grow our, our awareness all around the back side of heart. Can you feel the ribs around the back of the heart? Expressing with breath 
you feel those little rib muscles starting to wake up as they're participating in breathing. Right, these, these daily practices, right, they help us remember our breathing, living system. And release by setting the knees down. Inhale, slip the hands under the shoulders. Feel for that same pulling action of the pulling of the armpit muscles, shoulder blades toward the earth. You recreate that. Exhale the knees off the ground, downward dog. Inhale, step the right foot forward, eagle and warrior two. Exhale, we'll go left elbow over right. And again, to be, to be very clear, <clears throat> all of this shoulder blades stuff isn't about rounding the spine. It's maintaining this vertical, this rib cage, pelvis, spine alignment with integrity as we outreach. Right? Remaining utterly connected to our core even as there's motioning away from our core. Okay, we're gonna revisit some territory from the uh, yesterday. Inhale, unwind the arms, reach them out. Extended warrior. So when I exhale the right hand down, maybe I grab a block in order to be a little bit higher off the ground, which is perfectly fine. But I'm reaching the left arm up, and I'm still encouraging that wrapping action where the armpit and the chest muscles are pulling my shoulder blade around. Now, given that, I'm also extending, I'm lifting and lengthening, almost kind of backbending, if you will, my chest forward. Again, so these shoulder blade moves aren't here to encourage rounding the upper back. But to help us feel in and all around the heart and the shoulder structure. So I'll say that shoulder set of cues again, the armpit and the chest muscles. Oh, my arm and my shoulder blade kind of toward the front of my body and above my head. And then I'm lifting, almost subtly back bending my chest forward. So those upper back muscles are both 
getting a little stretch and they're working. Inhale, bring the hands down. We'll step our left foot forward to the top of the mat where we'll stand. Left hand grabs the right foot. So a standing alternate twist. Left hand grabs the outer edge of the right foot. Okay. Press through the ball of the right foot. Engage that inner right leg. Just like we were squeezing a roll. That's, that's why we squeeze a roll. To bring those inner legs into all of these other places. The inner foot. The inner right leg. You can feel that shoulder blade, that left shoulder blade being just subtly drawn away from the spine. Lift through the upper back, lift the upper back away from the mid back. Lift the chest bones. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Yes, yes, yes. And when we release, bend the right knee, inhale the right foot down. Exhaling, step the left foot back, set the knee down. We'll work twisting extended lunge. So the twisting part of that phrase is twisting or turning the left arm over the right thigh. The left hand goes down to a block or the ground. Now here's the extended part. The right arm reaches overhead. So my left shoulder stationary. Working, but stationary. My right armpit muscles my right chest muscles activating, pulling my arm toward the front of my body and overhead. Feel for breathing into the upper chest, the, kind of the bust area, the shoulders, upper back. Inhaling, unwind. Set hands down, exhale, chaturanga. Let's lower all the way down to the ground. In our cobra, inhaling, feel the mid spine articulate. Feel the upper spine moving in relation to that mid spine. Exhale, lower, downward dog. So we'll do a slight variation on downward dog. Step your feet away from your hands about one to two inches. So we've just broadened the base of this triangle and allow the shoulder blades to move just a little bit closer to the spine instead of the, the being drawn away from the spine, the wrapping move. Just let the, let the shoulder blades take on a new position on the rib cage. Breathe to acknowledge and feel and notice this new position, noting how the heart feels, how the 
shoulders feel supporting the heart. Some of what I love is can really get a, a sense of the energy of the heart, the tone and the quality of the heart as we're willing to feel and examine the shoulders. All right, here's that eagle in Warrior Two. Inhale, left foot forward. When we do this side, it's the right arm that will exhale over the left. Eagle, Warrior Two. And pressing out through the legs. I did get some notes that there were some tired legs from yesterday, so we'll give those a, a little rest today. All right, to extended warrior, inhale, unwind the arms, reaching them out. Now with this extended, as we exhale the left hand down, you can go to a block or you can go to the ground, but the right arm will reach overhead. And again, feeling the right armpit and chest muscles, kind of pulling the shoulder blade structure around toward the front of the body and over the head. Plant that right foot so that you can access the upper spine and the upper ribs. It's really hard to feel breath, connect and move and, and reach the upper spine without firmly planting those feet, feeling the feet in the earth. All right, inhale, we'll bring the right hand down. Step the right foot forward, standing, alternate twist. So step the right foot forward, stand. And this time it's the right hand grabbing the outer edge of the left foot. Right hand grabs outer edge of left foot. Can you note, can you feel how you're kind of wrapping the, the right side of the trunk around that left hip? And kind of stretching, wrapping the entire right side of the torso around that left leg. Inhaling, we'll set the left foot down, we'll step the right foot back, and here's that twisting extended 
lunge. Exhaling will hook the right arm, the right armpit, over the left thigh. So here's that wrapping, stretching that right side of my back over the thigh. Hand to floor or block. The left arm reaches overhead. And re-release, inhaling, unwind. When we set the hands down, exhaling, chaturanga, we'll step back, we'll lower. We'll clasp the hands for boat. Interlace hands, inhale, drawing the legs together, so kind of energizing the legs. Exhale, reach those inner legs straight back. The chest lifts some degree. The knuckles reach back. Let's give it a few breaths. This is a... Letting the breath open up and find that chest wall. It's like reaching into all those little fibrous channels and the muscular channels and the bone spaces. Like letting the breath seep in all around the heart. Letting all the, the carotid and the collarbone remember its respiring nature, right? Releasing. How do I help the body remember that it's, it's this living, breathing, intelligent being? Inhale the hands under the chest. Exhale, downward dog. Now again, I'm going to step the feet back several inches. In widening my base, those armpit muscles function very differently. The shoulder blades are in a new spot. Just let that drive novel, novel uh, shoulder sensations. Let that kind of impel us to breathe into new shoulder and heart territory. There we go. All the way into the upper back. Those are some interesting places to get our breath. Inhale the right foot forward for twisting warrior. Exhaling the left arm over the right thigh.
And here goes the interlock. Sliding that left armpit down quite a bit. Right hand reaches behind back. Left hand reaches under the right thigh. Here too, I'm lifting my upper back away from the mid back. So kind of lifting, extending through the back of my body. My back muscles lift my chest. My back muscles, my upper back muscles kind of lift and display my chest toward to my chin. So I am working in that way. I'm not just hunched and wrapping and stretching my shoulder tissue, lifting through the chest and figuring out how do I breathe into the middle and the upper parts of the lung and the ribs. This is, this is the heart area closest to the brain. How are we breathing and, and feeling and expressing the heart right underneath the brain? How clear and vital is the heart and the lungs directly under the brain? You'll feel that, you'll feel it, you'll know it in your body. Release. Inhaling, unwind, set the hands down. Exhaling, chaturanga. Inhaling, upward dog or low cobra. Exhaling, downward dog. All right, here goes the other side. Twisting warrior. Inhale the left foot forward. Exhaling the right arm over the left thigh. Let your body remember breath. Help your body and your cells remember its respiring, alive nature. When we can feel that and know that in our body, ah, that's my living, respiring body. That's the sensation of my living body. Then we'll have litmus, we'll have the knowledge of knowing what lights that up and supports our living, breathing, conscious body, and we'll know what dims that. We'll know what choices we make or behaviors that we do that, that go against that and preclude that brilliance from showing up. Here's this twisting uh, interlock. I'm going to snuggle that right armpit down even further. And the left hand reaches behind the back. Now lift the upper back away from the mid spine.
release. Inhaling, unwind. Set hands down, exhaling. Chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. I want you to decide what's the best for your shoulders and your upper back. Hopefully all of these twists are translating through the, the more upper parts of the spine, not the lower, not the, not the lower rib or the low back. All right. So we're going to get into the very deep outer hip. Inhale, step your right foot forward for a lunge. However, we're going to set this up, this main cool stretch. So I have my right foot in the center of my mat. My outer edge of foot starts to bear all of my weight. So if you can see that, the sole of my foot is facing the left, it's open air. See that I tip my right knee to the right. I'm on the outer edge of my right foot. And now just using the hands wherever it's good. It's a lunge. I'm resting on the outer edge of my right foot. I'm pushing with my outer edge into the earth with the express intent of feeling and finding that deep, deep outer hip. For some of you, you may feel that in the inner, inner ham or groin. Yes, nothing should feel funny in the knee, zero. That just means we have to adjust our body weight forward or backward or... Now, some people do put their forearms on the ground, and that's fine. Just gets a little, little more snugly in there. Lengthening, softening the torso away from the, the hip. Again, nothing should feel twangy in the knee. Just adjust the foot until it all feels useful. And then when we release, set the right foot to the ground first. We turn here. We're moving into a revolved pyramid. So I'm going to grab my, my block for my left hand. Okay, revolved pyramid. Press that back knee off the ground. Reach the right arm into the sky. I'll say it all again. This is my right foot forward. My left hand is down on the ground. My right arm reaches toward the sky. Straight legged stance. My left foot is pointed about 11 o'clock on the, if, if there was a clock on the floor, it's turned out just a little bit. Now, if you want a little more hip and flank sensation, plant your left hand outside the right foot. And now distinguish this right hip from the left shoulder blade. Feel that right hip moving back away from the left shoulder blade. And inhaling, we'll set the left knee down to the ground. And here we're in a really nice place to work twisting scissors or side crow. 
So I'm going to hook my left arm over my right thigh. And it's here I can work, again, twisting scissors. Right hip to right elbow. Okay. Or side crow. Now, if you're playing next to a wall or a piece of furniture, that can actually help you a lot. If you want to play, spacing is an experimental thing. But let's say I'm doing twisting scissors. There's a wall behind me, which is to my left. I start to set up my twisting scissors. I can put my left foot on the wall. And that'll just steady me so I can start to straighten and play, right? So I can just touch the wall and then set up from there. If you really want to know, I'm about our usual distance from the wall, like 18 inches, forearm distance, shin distance. So twisting scissors, did you need to see side crow? Okay. So from that same twist, just, with just this one side, I've got my left arm over my right thigh. Getting the hip onto the elbow is really the, kind of the universal part of this. Okay. Twisting scissors is here. Side crow is here. It's just the position of the left leg. Okay, take a moment, go ahead, grab it, because we're gonna be moving out pretty quick. There you go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nice. And I think that right thigh really has to get a top of the, the tricep above the elbow. <laughs> All right, and stepping back, pressing back, downward dog. All right, so we're working that main coon stretch, a deep hip stretch. Inhale, step the left foot forward. Put it in the middle of your mat, the midpoint, the midline of your mat. Outer edge of the foot bears the weight, rendering the sole of my left foot. I can feel the air. My knee has significant bend, my heel has significant contact with the, with the earth. Let the breath that touches the shoulder also touch the pelvis. And let the breath that contacts the pelvis touch the heart. You know, a lot of these just little intentional internal healing moves that we can do on a regular basis is bringing and putting everything into the heart. Putting every pose, every complaint, every, everything that arises into the heart. Having all of our words come from the heart, having all of our sights be moved and taken into the heart. Letting each breath that contacts these sore and these achy places and these wondrous places be brought back to the heart. Okay. And then inhaling, as we walk our way out of there, we're setting up this revolved pyramid. Slant the left foot. Press off of that right or back knee, straight-legged pose. Right hand goes down, down to ground. 
Left arm reaches towards sky. And bring that block up really high if you're experiencing some, any kind of tissue damage that might still be healing in the back of the leg. Just always kind of bring the hand up, make it less stretchy. Stretch doesn't really seem to help the fibers um, kind of heal together, but contraction might, kind of gathering, contracting. And inhaling, bringing the hands down to the ground for twisting scissors or side crow. Right arm hooks over the left thigh. When the hands are fully down, left hip moves to the left elbow. If you have a wall or a piece of furniture, you can touch your right toe to it. and It'll just help stabilize. And they may not be moving, but I'm actively rotating my thigh bones. I'm actively rolling my thigh bones inwardly. There you go, yeah. <laughs> we'll give it just another moment. If you're resting, that's perfectly fine. This is. Just if you're resting, remain connected to your breath. So sometimes we conflate resting for just forgetting. We don't have to forget when we rest. Remaining conscious is, there's a skill to it, but it's free. It's not like another task, it's, it's free. Right? And we'll press back into downward dog. Let's gently set the knees down. We'll revisit our shoelace. So we have the right over the left. I'm gonna do twist to each side. And this will be our, our concluding event here. First, twisting toward the foot. Inhale, lift, right arm, using those armpit muscles, those and those chest muscles to help lift the arm and the shoulder blade, the ribs lift, exhale, lengthen the ribs over that right sole of foot, and we'll hook that over.
Inhaling will come up right. Lifting through the ribs. Reaching up to the left arm. Exhaling, twisting toward the right thigh. We're just hanging out with our body, just breathing, almost as if just waiting for our body to remember respiring, right? Just waiting with our body. And we'll feel as it remembers its living, breathing nature, we'll feel that. It's, it's really astonishing. And the body almost, it's like waking up, like, oh, oh, breath. <laughs> I know how to do this. <laughs> And release. Inhale, we'll come up right. We'll switch the cross of our legs. Hooking the left foot over the right uh, knee. Left ankle over right knee. Twisting toward the foot to start. Exhaling. Reach with the left chest and armpit muscles. Let them Pull you to the right, reaching, lengthening the ribs, hook arm to foot. Just so we're not throwing our body into a heap over onto the right side of our mat. <laughs> We're finding these little positions so we can just camp out and remember and remember. There used to be this wonderful pond I would go to most evenings for sunset and all the bullfrogs and the cicadas and the insects would just be chirping and harping about in their sunset song. And if they noticed you approaching the bank of the pond, it would kind of dim down for a moment. And they'd remain quiet for several moments before their, their song would carry on. And in a lot of ways, I think there's a lot of just this, we arrive, the critters and the aliveness song is a little bit startled, and we have to give it time to kind of start its song again. And that's what we're there to remember. There's this lively chirping of aliveness, this harping and croaking about of the body being alive. We just gotta sneak up on it sometimes. <laughs> Inhale, we'll unwind. Keep the legs as they are, twisting toward the thigh. This is the right arm reaching, turning, contacting.
and release inhaling unwind and set up for shavasana unwind the legs lie back This would actually be a good moment for a shoulder stand. If you're inspired to do shoulder stand, you certainly may. It might be really nice to the upper back after all of that um, twisting and turning and manipulating that we did do, I believe, in the upper back. If you'd rather just lie in Shavasana, perfectly fine. Now, when you're ready, we'll start by bending knees. Turning to a side. And pressing up. Namaste. Have a wonderful day.